my first time making French toast with brown bread, but you can't tell because it gets sucked up with so much egg that it just looks all the same. So, we just had a power failure. Sitting here, watching freaking YouTube. All of a sudden the power cuts out. Hear a loud bang outside and the power comes back on. That's fun. Hopefully that doesn't happen too freaking often around here because I got work to do today, damn it. I know they're doing blasting up on the hill, but uh, they gotta do me a solid and pump the brakes on that shit. Things coming back up over here. Guys, check this out, she's so mad. Hey Google. I can't reach the internet right now. Check your modem or router connection and try again. Hey Google. I can't reach the internet right now. Check your modem or router connection and try again. Well, that can't be good. Better make sure that's fixed or otherwise I'm in trouble for today. Yep. Yeah. Gotta love living in North Bay where they just blast up the hill and forget that there's hydro poles and they accidentally blow them up. Aw oh, man, I was uploading my vlog. That's probably why the power failed. Alrighty, we seem to have recovered from that power failure. That's a good thing. Anyway, I made a pot of coffee, so... I'm gonna go and pour that into my great big pumpy thermos so I can have it up here to drink throughout the day. It's kind of funny, I made coffee on Monday and I didn't drink it all and I ended up drinking it on Tuesday. So I weighed in last night before going to bed just because I was curious and I was having a shower so it was like the opportune time. After eating all my foods and stuff, I was at 223, which is pretty damn good if you think about I just finished eating a bunch of burgers and all the food throughout the day and that and Sunday I started off at 225.8 and now I was at 223 point I think it was 223.8 so two pounds down and literally all I'm doing is keeping myself in a caloric deficit while hitting my protein scores and not caring about the other two macros best part is is it's enough food where I'm not hungry but yeah French toast with whole wheat bread whole wheat bread is weird man because it's like um, it's almost like it's stiffer it's obviously grainier because it's whole grain but um, it's got a different texture to it a different everything like white bread is just really moist and falls apart when you get too much egg into it but the whole wheat seems to hold its structure but it doesn't have the absorbency of white bread. So I was able to get two, barely able to get 250 grams worth of egg into whole wheat. Where with white bread I can easily pound 400 into it. So whole grain is better for you though. Because uh, especially if you're trying to burn calories. Apparently it has some thermogenic effect and stuff. Yeah. What the hell is that? Freaking had a spider on me. I felt something tickling in the back of my head. Freaking spider. I just crushed him. What an idiot. It's the first break of the day. Anyway, guys, it's 10:30, and I'm not gonna rock a piss. Drink a lot of coffee, and my kitty cat looks like a cow. It's a cow cat. Yeah. So I'm gonna go rock a piss. You know what's funny though? I had that French toast, and like I said, this is the first time I haven't used white bread. I use brown bread. Can we even call it that anymore? And. Um, I feel more sustained, as in, I'm not really hungry right now, which is weird. Just reached out to my boss and asked him if I can use him as a reference on my uh, application for this other job. And he responds back, he's like, sure, here you go, here's the information you need, so on and so forth. And then asks me why I'm choosing to leave IT for another career path. And I had to explain to him the whole reason behind it is, it's like, number one, you keep cutting my hours. It makes it hard to actually have a life when you can't afford to pay attention. And number two, it's, um, it really sucks working for a company when they're not the ones paying you. So it's kind of hard to really, you know, like when you're working for your boss and your boss sees that you're doing a great job and they love the work you do and they, they'd hate to lose you they have the ability where if you're looking for a new job they could turn around and be like hey you know what what if we gave you like an extra two dollars an hour or something would that work 
and they don't have the ability where I work to do that because we're contract. I gotta reset. You know, I'm surprised like like things like stoves and microwaves don't have capacitors built in to hold their to hold their time. Then my coffee maker also loses time. See the coffee maker? It knows what time it is. So the coffee maker is smarter than my stove and my microwave combined. Like is it that hard to put in a low drain capacitor that's good for at least 45 minutes to two hours to maintain the simple time algorithm running? Doesn't have to have the time on the screen. Just hold what time it's set to. So when power does return, everything, you're not, you're not running around the house setting all the 12 o'clock flashers to the proper time. But yeah, I guess he gets where I'm coming from because, uh, like I said, this new job, from what I gather, I know a couple people who are doing it, uh, there's a lot of overtime available. And unlike now, when I work overtime at my job, I just get paid regular pay. Normally, you would get paid time and a half for anything over 44 hours, unless you're a contract employee, then you got to go by the contract rules, which override labor law. So anything over 44 hours for me is still standard time. So when I was working the 49 hours straight or the 52 hours straight or the 56 hours straight, that was literally straight time, just regular hourly wage. So this new job has the full-time hours, so that's sweet. Um, better pay, hourly rate, which is sweet. It's a bit of a different style of job. It's something I've never done before, so it'll uh, be very interesting to get involved in, but I think I can pretty much do it. I've done so many other weird careers in my past that uh, maybe a change is needed. Maybe it'll liven me up. Plus they have other benefits and perks on site and benefits in general like drug plan, sick days i don't have sick days right now i get sick i'm done um vacation i haven't had a vacation since 2016. wouldn't that be neat to be able to take two weeks off and get paid while being off like that's a concept that i haven't had for four years now and i'd really love to be like hey uh, like i see all my friends on facebook hey eh? they're like hey i'm on vacation and i'm like wow what's that like <laughs> i miss that kind I don't even know what vacation's like. It'd be nice to be able to, you know, if me and my friend wanted to go do something fun, uh, like say go to Niagara Falls for the day or for like a weekend, be able to do that. Be able to not only afford to do that, be able to take the time off and go do that. Leave on a Friday, come back on a on a Tuesday because or whatever, and go have fun in Niagara Falls, checking out the sites, maybe bring the fishing gear, find some fishing holes down there to fish. Or just go and enjoy the tourist attractions. You know, there's also the... Uh, I'd love to go to that place that Rex just came back from, uh, Tobamori. And go camping out there. I got the tent for it. I gotta get some other shit still, like uh, cooking, like a stove and all that. But, um... That would be fun to go out to Tobamori and check out the sites. There's a lot of really nice things out there. That uh, could be fun to videotape and make vlogs about and just go out and explore find a way to bring the fat bike with me and go ripping around that could be a real good time but once again when you don't have vacation time it makes it hard like a lot of you're like oh man adam you need to plan another trip to the dominican or go to cuba and i i take time number one the trip would cost me a lot number two i take time off of work and i don't get paid so it's not like back in the day of the Dominican and the Mexico trip, those were paid time off. I took a, I took two weeks vacation out of my four in March and I got paid for those two weeks while I wasn't even working to go to Dominican, to go to the uh, Mexico. So that's why that was, that was feasible then. Plus I made better money then than I do now. That's why I'm hoping that everything pans out and this new job is a thing because it's going to open up a whole new doorway financially as well as give me the ability to take vacation and actually enjoy life because like sometimes you need a break and I've been going straight like on this job here I've been going non-stop now for three years over three years February the 13th was my 2017 was my first day on the job 
And I haven't had a vacation since. I've been going nonstop. Now, for some of you, you're probably in the same boat as me. Maybe you had a job before where you had vacation time and now you don't and you're starting to feel the stress. And it does burn you out after a while. But the problem is, is because of the type of job I do, because it's contract work, they don't give two shits if they burn you out because they'll just replace you with another contract. You mean nothing to them. Even if you do a good job, you mean nothing to them because in their eyes, they can just find somebody else to fill the position. Now, will they find somebody in North Bay? Probably not because a lot of people up north here are more into trade work versus office work. There's not a lot of IT anymore. And the problem with IT is a lot of it's being contracted out because it's cheaper that way. But is the quality better? A lot of the times, no. Um, I know there's been some facilities around here that, um, for instance, uh, I can't even, I, I, I don't want to mention any names, but I know a couple of them that screwed up and hired they had local IT, they had a group in-house, felt it was too expensive to keep them running, shut them down, and outsourced to like Mexico or India. And it literally nearly shut down production because the computer failures were taking too long to resolve, literally causing uh, work to get backed up because people were just not able to do their job because shit was broken. So, can you operate with that? Probably not, but you know, this is the problem. When you, when you put the quality of service in front of the cost of service, or sorry, the cost of service in front of the quality of service, then you're literally putting your customers in second, second stage. You're gonna lose business because they're gonna, your customer's gonna leave and find a similar product elsewhere for, a price that they can negotiate with this other group and on top of that they're going to um, get the service if that other company can provide it and that's exactly what happened to a lot of these companies that decided to outsource their IT because like I say IT has become a joke to a lot of people like a lot of people think that we just Google search in <laughs> the answers and I know a lot of people think that because holy crap you go on Facebook and that's all the memes are. The number one tool in IT and it's the Google search bar and like, no, 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 no. There's a lot of stuff that we actually do that does not require you to look it up. Mind you, I will use Google for certain things like finding out what the heck an error message really means. But a lot of the times in IT, it comes down to experience. Like if you know like I know how programs work because I'm, I'm coming from a programmer's side of things. So I get mad when an error code comes up and it means nothing. Like good old Macintosh. I get really upset when that happens because it's like if the coder took their time and actually put in proper error codes because every uh, program, when you're, when you're making a program and an error happens, it's a code. And when you debug the code, you know exactly what caused that error. So you can take that code and be and actually run error handlers that'll say, the reason why this happened is because of this. So, so on and so forth. Like if you put in numbers where there should be letters. Instead of coming back with an error string number of 0x000EFAB, you can have it say, please insert characters instead of numbers or letters instead of numbers, or please <clears throat> format this way. And a lot of coders will not even bother making error handlers, so it confuses the shit out of people. So you look up the error code on Google and it comes back and says, this error code was generated, <clears throat> this error code was generated because the user put in numbers instead of letters. Man, you know what I hate about strawberries? The little seeds on them. I got one stuck in my throat. <clears> throat> I don't know, I think a career change is needed. I've been doing this kind of work forever, and sometimes uh, when life is hard, you gotta change. So, hopefully things work out. Yay, 1.30 lunch wraps. Cause it's the last break of the day. It's almost four o'clock and I didn't do any vlogging all day. I just rhyme day with day. However, I've been more active than her. She only stood up because I walked out the door. Scampers, go up on the window. Come up here, come up there. There you go. 
Let them see your stupid face. Scampers, show them your stupid face. Show them your stupid. What do you? Why? What are you doing? What, you petting yourself? You weirdo. You little weirdo. That's a little weirdo. You're a little weirdo. Oh Jesus. Wow. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. You're freaking stupid, whoa. Uh, so I think after work tonight, I'm gonna put in a weightlifting workout. I wasn't gonna, but then I was like, you know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna go all in to win. Currently we're sitting at, well, we got over our um, 5,000 or 10,000 steps. I'm gonna let stupid out now so that after I'm done work, I can just uh, come downstairs and lift, lift, lift a mania, lift, lift, lift a mania. So this is actually pretty good. Got some subway coupons in the mail. Any foot long, seven dollars. And if you buy buy one, get one free foot long. So if you buy a foot long sub with any drink, and get one foot long sub of equal or lesser price free. Additional charges for extra. What? Oh, extras. I get it. It's like if you buy a sub and you're like, oh, but I want double meat on that, and they're like, yeah, well, that's gonna cost you more money, a little loser. That that's a thing. So sometimes on the weekends, me and my friend and I we go out to. Uh, do some fishing and after fishing we're both usually hungry so we head up subway on fisher and get some sandwiches so we can buy one get one free that'd be all right little bogo bogoff get one free bogoff bogoff bitches i'm in a mood it's all right man super uh super weird i'm on live chat today and the problem is on live chat i got my picture on my profile and i didn't realize it comes across on live chat totally had like a colleague not somebody i work with but like one of the clients i should say not a colleague a client like flirt with me and um i kind of need hr it was pretty gross didn't didn't appreciate it one bit i was like no hard no go away no I'm telling you man this quarantine life it's making lonely people extra lonely like like extra lonely like super lonely not me i'm loving it you know if i could live my life like this for the rest of my life i'd be okay but uh, I know there's going to come a time where they're going to be like, all right, guys, everybody back into the office. Let's waste money on renting buildings. Like they could save so much more money by just letting us work from home instead of wasting money on office internet, office building rental, because we don't own our building. We rent it. Um, facilities, operations like the HVAC and all that. Just let us work from home. It's working. We're able to do it. It's fine, you know, and then we get the bonus of writing off our internet and writing off this, writing off that. Hell, if I had to work from home all the time, I, it would probably be financially feasible to uh, keep this job. But uh, I'd have to go into the office and pay for parking because the building we rent doesn't have sufficient parking for everybody. Um, it's bullshit. And I got another call today from the, uh, the parking guy saying, uh, this is your final warning. Uh, if you do not pay your parking, we'll have to rent it out to someone else. Uh, we do and then he says like, we have a list and i'm like well pick from the list and go ahead and rent i don't care worst case if i have to go into the office i'll just you know park further down the road and walk there whatever or if it's nice out, i'll ride my bike and lock it up to the bike guard outside and get some exercise in before and after my shift mind it only takes me like not even 10 minutes to bike to work yeah that's definitely an option bike to work and then bike home after work and Frig whatever. Doesn't bother me any. Okay, that dog's got to be done shitting out his ass by now. Oh my god. What the hell did he get into that he's crowning? Come on, Oreo. So remember when I said I didn't have a solution for stupid getting in the back of my truck? That's what I call my dog, stupid. I call him stupid, Oreo, dumb dumb, scruffy. He has many names. He responds to most of them too. But uh, I came up with a solution. See, I can't pick him up because he thinks he's a freaking German Shepherd and German Shepherds don't get picked up and put places. They usually just you know they're able to jump in. So because he has small dog complex like really bad, my solution for getting him in the truck is simple. I bought some ramps and you've seen them before. I used them to get the lawn tractor up and uh, down off of the, uh, the cement over here. So my big solution is, is use those truck ramps so that Oreo can just run up them. I think that might work. I think he might be able to do that. I'm pretty sure his stupid brain could figure that one out. Hopefully, he is pretty stupid. So that's what we're gonna try and see if we can actually pull that off. 
so that uh, if we do decide to go camping and we bring stupid with us we have a way to get them in and out of the uh, the truck fun times so that part of the uh, problem has been solved maybe we'll have to do a test run with it and see if it works and just hope to Christ while we're sleeping at night he's not taking dumps in the tent because hey this is a new territory maybe I'll just shit in here I could probably never bring my crown land camping because no my luck you would attract bears and coyotes and walruses and leviathans but campground camping he'd probably be okay probably be all right bring some kibbles along for him to eat and try not to feed him any human food so he doesn't shit the tent because you give this dog human food man and it's milkshakes and they're not the kind that bring all the boys to the yard nope but we'll figure that out. We'll cross that road when we decide to go camping. Yeah, I've been looking at some spots and we that um, remember yesterday I showed you that magazine and I said, oh, I should read through that. Uh, this one right here. I'm kind of shocked I actually got this. The Ontario Island Retreat. There is a lot of cool camping spots in this magazine. So actually I'm going to bring this upstairs with moi. And I think there's a lot of potential hot spots to take trucky and tenty and go campy mind you they're paid lots so they do have utilities but that's okay i don't mind that that is all right by me hey anyway, people i'm gonna get back to work i'll talk to you later peace out all right guys just finished my workout 6 37 today is one of those calorie deficit days big time remember that day that i Said I'd do 30,000 steps and ended up burning 5,000 calories. Well, I didn't do uh, 30,000 steps. I'm only at 17,000, I think. But uh, I can tell you, I definitely am on par to burn 5,000 calories today. Just to make sure the other day wasn't a fluke, I tried it again today and I literally was able to press the entire rack. As in, every rod on the Bowflex bench pressed it. And then I tried to butterfly it. Couldn't butterfly it, so I took the 50 pounders off and ran with the, uh, the the 50 pounds on the back are an additional thing you can buy. And apparently I can buy another one and add another 50 pounds on it. I might look into that. But <coughs> the, um, the stock weight is 310. So you got your 250s, your 30, and then your 25. So it gives you, what, 205 per side? Am I right on that? Can I math today? Yeah, so it gives you 155 per side, 310 total. Um, so what I did was I had the 155 on there and I was able to fly that no problem, but I know I can fly 160. So anyway, I decided to fly 155. I did uh, five sets of 410, uh, five sets of uh, 510, four, uh, five sets 410 press, five sets 310 fly, and uh, I did uh, 10 sets, 10 reps of bench press off my uh, my bar there. And then for back, I did uh, overhead pull, cable pull down. I, find, I like using the cable because you can get more reach back than using that stupid bar. But some people like the bar because at the bottom you can rock it and then rock each side and try and target that way. Either way it works. Hey, whatever works for you, whatever gets you gains, man. Go with it. Also guys, um, currently in the dryer is my sleeping bag. Mm, okay, so why is it throwing heat? Put it on air flock, maybe? Because there's no button on here that says cold, so I don't know. But yeah, we got the old sleeping bag in there. Went through the wash, no problem, so we'll try it in the dry. Didn't wreck the washer, so. And uh, I can't remember who said it, but somebody's like, Ah, I don't follow the rules. I just go. I think the whole reason why on the tag it said use powdered soap or powdered detergent is because a lot of people buy liquid detergent like Tide. That's just like your basic Tide or your basic, you know, Arm and Hammer. Not the stuff that I buy because I have sensitive skin. So the, like, if you buy regular Tide, it's loaded with like dyes and odors and all sorts of garbage. Where the stuff I buy is. There's nothing in it. It's literally, I might as well wash my clothes with vinegar. This was the first workout ever that I needed a protein shake mid-workout because I was completely depleted. Also, these fries are freaking awesome. I soaked the potatoes in the fridge for like an hour. Drained out the water. 
covered them in this shit. It's a uh, clubhouse parmesan and herb. It's um, oh, it's got no calories. Okay, I thought this stuff had calories in it, but no, no. There's another one that I buy that had. Oh yeah, the uh, bacon powder that has calories in it. So I cover them in that, and then cook them up. And the taste off of them right now is just stupid. And by stupid, I mean simply amazing. Flipping the burgers with this shitty spatula is fun. I really need to go to the box store and buy another shitty spatula because this one's big. I've had that since 2006. Holy shit, better than McDonald's. Yup. All right, guys, it's freaking nine o'clock. That dryer has got to be done by now. My dog wants to go outside for a shit. Watch your face, campers. She's like trying to get inside the door. Oh, the mouse. Mouse, mouse, you're a cow. It's a mouse, mouse, you're a cow. Mouse, mouse, mouse. Anyway, let's go downstairs. We'll let Stoop it out for his final pee break. I should have grabbed my glass. Let me grab my Bubba Jug. Bubba Jug. Oh shit, this tripod sucks. This is the. Um, dollar store monopod I decided to give it a try with this camera and I realized that this camera is pretty heavy and if you tilt it any direction it just the friggin thing will just start to roll like how it's doing that right now yeah that's um that's dollar store quality boys like if you uh, want to get a monopod on the cheap there's some things you got to deal with and one of those things is uh no stops on the roly poly. The roly poly. Hey, listen, you hear that? Yeah, me neither. That means the dryer's done. All right, moment of truth. It didn't explode, I don't think. Actually, it held together nicely. Holy shit. Sweet. All right, one last thing I need to buy for camping. Sweet. So, gear check. We have a tent. We have a mattress. We have that. I have some spare pillows upstairs. Yeah. Good tip, I forgot who gave me the tip of not listening to the labels and just doing whatever the hell you want. That was probably the best damn advice I've ever been given. I probably shouldn't apply it all the time though, right? I probably, I might have gotten lucky. I don't know, who cares? All right guys, well, that's pretty cool. We got one last thing we need to purchase for camping, which is a sleeping bag. Like I said, I got a mattress upstairs. It's one of those foam toppers for a bed. They're a cheap kind, but it'll work. Thinking about getting like a bed sheet or something and wrapping it around it and then sewing it shut so it's like permanently in there. That could be kind of neat and a solution for camping. And then I can roll it up into a ball and then when I'm, or not a ball, but like into a tube and then unroll it when I want to use it and roll it back up when I'm not going to use it. And holy crap, do I look like I belong in a log cabin somewhere. This thing, I'm telling you, it's getting a little cray. It's like this side's growing out more than this side. I don't know what's going on with that. Whatever. Anyway, people, on that note, thanks for watching. I'm going to shut her down here because it is currently quarter after nine. I'm getting to bed. Tomorrow is another day, so I don't know what we're going to do tomorrow. We'll see what the weather brings, and then we'll make our decisions then. So thanks for watching. Like, favorite, comment. Don't forget to subscribe. And until next time, guys, stay safe and peace the frig out. Sit, stupid, sit. Good dog.